Macadamia nuts are always gonna be a focal point for me just because they're probably the lowest carb, next to peely nuts, but the lowest carb nut that you're gonna find. And there's no phytates because they don't have a skin on them, so that means that they're easier to break down. No matter where you are, being able to have some nice sea salt macadamia nuts is gonna curb any craving and just get you through the tough times. Coconut oil, of course. It's so easy to just you know, fall victim to using canola oil or a normal like, kind of cooking oil. And the reality is, despite some of the conflicting science that's out there or what some people will say about coconut oil, it's a saturated fat that can be utilized by the body. It's very high in lauric acid, so it helps support your healthy gut. It also, of course, has medium chain triglycerides, which give you pretty much instant energy when you're on a keto diet. Sardines, they get a bad rap. Sardines are like probably one of the most nutrient dense fishes that you can eat. Like they are super, super high in omega-3s. Gram for gram or pound for pound, however you wanna look at it, they are the most omega-3 dense food that you can find. Like they're great. And super high in what's called DHA, docosahexaenoic acid, so specifically the omega-3 that's really good for the brain. But also, I mean, you're just getting good quality protein too. And I like to say that sardines are quite honestly like the perfect fat to protein ratio. Like it's the perfect keto food. I like to think that like, I'm paving the way for nutritional yeast because I put it on everything. I'm not a big dairy guy, so a lot of times like I love the idea that nutritional yeast sort of have a, has a cheesy taste, kind of a cheesy consistency. And all it is is deactivated yeast, super high B vitamins, so high uh, B6, high B12. You know, if you're vegan or vegetarian, it's a great addition. Put it on your veggies. If you mix it with a little bit of coconut oil, it makes like a cheesy sauce that's so good. You put it on asparagus, put it on broccoli, it's, put it on anything. Pork rinds, for years and years and years, for for all eternity, we thought like pork rinds are just like this unhealthy thing, right? And there is some truth to that. Like not all pork rinds are created equal, but if you put good quality pork rinds, you know, in your body, you're actually getting a good high quality fat. And it's like a perfect keto food. Very, very low protein, high fat, exactly what you need to just keep you that satisfied crunch. And that's what you kind of miss on the keto diet. You miss the crunch. You don't realize it until you're a few months in. You're like, ah, I haven't had something that crunches for a while. Like I used to be able to have like some bread or a crouton, but pork rinds, they solve that problem. Ghee is one of the only dairy components that I really like to have in my body. And the reason is, is because ghee is so deprived of the normal milk solids because it goes through such a process of churning and then straining that you really don't have the milk solids or the lactose. So you can even say that someone that's lactose intolerant could totally have ghee. The nice thing is ghee, it's pure milk fat. So it's not the milk solids, it's not the whey, it's just pure milk fat. So very, very high quality fat, but it's also high in what's called butyric acid or it converts into butyric acid. So it's a short chain fatty acid that feeds sort of the endothelial cells within your gut. So it's good for your gut, but it also ends up helping your body utilize those fats a little bit more. So you have good gut health, good gut brain axis, but also good clean energy. Who doesn't love coffee? And the fact is, is if you go and you pick up just an ordinary creamer, chances are it's not keeping it keto friendly and you're probably taking a couple steps back in terms of your overall health goals. Instead of taking a couple steps back by having half and half, you're taking a couple steps forward by giving your body those medium chain triglycerides that are great just for energy optimization, but also great for helping you produce ketones. Then you have a little bit of almond milk in there too, so it thins it out so you're not having a super high fat, high calorie creamer, which is a nice balance between the two. Monk fruit is my jam when it comes down to a sweetener. Stevia is great, but stevia has a little bit of a bitterness to it. And again, I love stevia, I use it, but monk fruit is, in my opinion, a little bit superior. Whereas some sweeteners, basically the brain gets super excited because something's sweet. Well, because monk fruit, even though it's sweet, it's seen as an herb, it's a little bit different. So the brain registers a bit different. So you don't have the potential insulin spike that you can get with some artificial sweeteners or natural sweeteners, but quite frankly, it's just convenient and it tastes good. Electrolytes, let's get our electrolytes in in a fun way. Okay, you can't always eat a salty steak or you can't always eat these things that are gonna like be uh, super good tasting and give you the salt in sort of an inconspicuous way. So why not get one in a tasty way? So these Ultima packs are just great because they taste really good. Like their lemon one is my favorite. It tastes like you're drinking lemonade, but you're actually replenishing your electrolytes. When you're on the road, when you're just like traveling around and you're just stuck in traffic and you're like, okay, I'm getting hungry, but I don't wanna pull over and you know, go to Arby's. I wanna actually eat something healthy. You know, that's exactly where Chomps comes in. When it comes down to being anti-inflammatory and really actually being a good, healthy food, it's very difficult to find that in a jerky or a meat stick. And they're non-GMO project verified, which is big for me, but they taste amazing and literally my son even eats them. If my son loves them, then you're gonna love them too.